Hi everybody and welcome back to my channel. It's Russell with Ink and Paper Blog. How are you doing today? I hope well. I am back from Oregon. I am back from my grandmother's 90th birthday, which was fantastic. Um, she didn't know I was coming, so she walked in and surprised. Um, she said that I lied to her because I said I'd see her at Christmas time. Um, so that was really nice. The birthday party was a smashing success. I did tape videos with her and my aunt and my nephew, so you'll get some family videos coming along the pipeline, which um, for me are worth every minute of the entire trip. So it was a really, really great visit. A lot of time with uh, our little nephew, Owen, and niece, Bethany, four and just over one. Um, we, we really adore those two children. Um, yeah, it was great. It was super great to see my parents, see my uh, brother, my sister-in-law. It was really, really exciting. So, but I am back and today I had to go to work. So you can imagine that was a long, long day. But I wanna do two things in this video. One, I'm gonna make an announcement that I am so excited about you guys. And then two, I'm gonna do a book haul of the books that I bought while I was in Oregon. So first, I want to invite you all to the first event that I'm gonna be moderating at a bookstore. I'm so excited. Um, I am going to be at East Bay Booksellers on November 7th at 7 o'clock. That's in Oakland, California. So if you are local, please come. And I'm going to be um, hosting a conversation between Jesse Chaffee of Florence and Ecstasy. You guys know how much I love this book. So I'm so excited to meet her and discuss her book with her. And also, if I can get this cover... Um, in conversation, oh, it's got a weird glare. Let's see if I can get it. The Miranda by Jeff Nicholson. Now, I'm sorry, that cover, the cover's a little bit off-white, and the book just came out today, so my copy is on the way. Um, and they're going to be in conversation with me on November 7th at 7 o'clock at East Bay Booksellers. So if you are in the area, I would love to meet you all and would love for you all to come. Now, you guys know that Florence and the Ecstasy is a novel about a woman struggling with an eating disorder. She goes to Florence and um, sort of works on her inner health. It um, mixes sort of the magic of the city of Florence the saints that she um, researches while she's there. There's a library that kind of gives her an inner strength. It's about refinding who she is. I loved this book. So I'm super excited to meet her. And I'm going to read you what the Miranda is about real quick because I can't wait to get my copy. Um, yeah, so I'm just going to read you what it's about now. So this is the Miranda by Jeff Nicholson. It says... A former torture expert decides to walk the circumference of the earth from the comfort of his own backyard. In a dire outing that one might expect from the authority and social satire, Nicholson explores the complicated consequences of a life spent in the business of torment. Our protagonist is Joe Johnson, a trained psychotherapist who has spent years in the service of the team a covert government agency that has hired him to teach its operatives to resist torture. He recently resigned and in the wake of a divorce from his wife, Carol, is adrift. Buying a small house a few hours north of London, Joe commits to walking 25 miles a day for 1,000 days to complete a circumnavigation of the planet, except that he's not leaving his backyard. It may not have been conspicuously, demonstrably happy, but I definitely wasn't unhappy, Joe says. I was content with my life, taking pleasure in small things and in the much larger thing of walking around the world. But Joe's backyard gets to be an increasingly crowded place with visits from nosy neighbors, a philosophical mailman, some local riffraff who start a trivial war with Joe, and a curious child. He finds solace in the company of a personal assistant, Miranda, an inspiring bartender who plies Joe with her experimental cocktails. Unfortunately, Joe's unusual hobby attracts the attention of the local press and would-be filmmaker, thrusting him into public view. For a man who has trespassed against so many souls, the past is never far behind, and the consequences of Joe's actions soon become calling. It's a strange book, not quite a thriller, and, not thriller, and yet oddly contemplative about the human condition, capturing the perpetual unease of a world seemingly forever at war with itself. 
an existential revenge story offering a confession that doesn't beg forgiveness. You guys, come on, does that not sound amazing? So that is again, November 7th at East Bay Booksellers. It's going to be me in conversation with Jesse Chaffee and Jeff Nicholson, Florence in Ecstasy and the Miranda. I'm so excited. I hope some of you guys can be there. I would love to meet you. Yeah, so I will put all of the details down below. Let me know if you can come. I would love for you guys to be there. So excited. Um, I have a small stack of books. I posted a picture on Instagram of what I bought at the used bookstore. Um, but I did buy one new book I wanted to tell you guys about, and that is The Visitor by Katherine Burns. And this is a debut novel out of London. Oh, I'm sorry. She was born in Manchester, went to Trinity College, University of Cambridge, and she is a bond trader in London. So I'm super, this book sounds creepy. So if you're looking for something for Halloween-ish times, or if you're looking for just a weird, creepy thriller, this is it. Um, Marion Zetlin lives with her domineering older brother, John, in a crumbling mansion on the edge of a northern seaside resort. A timid spinster who sleeps with teddy bears, Marion does her best to live by John's rules, even if it means turning a blind eye to the noises she hears coming from behind the cellar door, and ignoring the women's laundry in the hamper that isn't hers. For years, she's buried the signs of John's devastating secret deep into the recesses of her mind, until the day John suffers a heart attack, and Marion must face what he has kept hidden. Forced to go down in the cellar, Marion discovers more about herself than she ever thought possible. As the truth slowly unravels, we finally begin to understand. Maybe John isn't the only one with a dark side. Spinster sleeps with teddy bears. Something going on in the cellar. Oh my gosh, The Visitor by Catherine Burns sounds so good. I'm so excited. So that was the new book that I purchased. Everything else I purchased was used and spin around a while, so I'll kind of fly through them a little bit. Um, as I've told you guys, I'm a huge fan of Mae Sarton, and I have been collecting all of her books as I go along. This is Kinds of Love, and basically this says the byline is friendship, marriage, and intertwined lives in a small New Hampshire town. This is about, I think, Willard, which is a small town in New Hampshire, and basically it's about... Uh, relationships gone bad. Um, I, I'm i super excited about it. Mae Sarton writes a dark novel, but she also writes a very literary novel, so I'm super interested to see what she does with this. This is a bit of a chunkster for her. I haven't read much that's that big. Um, and the main characters are over 70 years old. So you know how I like books about old people. I'm just, I, it's my thing. Um, maybe I'll just tell you, um, they used, it says, Christine Chapman and her husband Cornelius, both past 70, are summer people, people who come to rural in England for the summer months and go home to the city when cold weather comes. This year, however, they decide to stay on, and it's what happens in the winter months in New Hampshire. Okay. The next book probably doesn't need much speaking about, and that's Jeanette Winterson's Oranges Are Not the Only Fruit. Now, I have heard this about this book everywhere, but it is very hard to find here in, Cal in California. So I was so excited when I found this beautifully untouched used copy for six dollars and um i'm not going to say much about it other than i don't want to know much other than a lot of people say it's a fantastic um story from the lgbtq plus community i've heard that it is beautifully written everyone i know that's read it has raved about it and jeanette winterson um i think sophie carlson says that she's her spirit guide so that is a vote in the world for me. So I'm super excited about Oranges Are Not the Only Fruit by Jeanette Winterson. The next book I picked up on a whim, and that is Jerusalem the Golden by Margaret Drabble. I had heard Margaret Drabble's name mentioned somewhere, and when I posted this, I want to say on Instagram, I think his name on Instagram is Sad Polar Bear but I'm not 100% sure. But he said that Margaret Drabble was one of his favorite writers, and just look at that cover. Um, that is lost. People don't read them enough. So let me just tell you about her. It says, Claire Mom came to the University of London to escape from her life in the north of England and from her cold and bitter mother. How lovely then to discover a brand new family by proxy, the rich, warmly emotional, ever so immoral Denims. 
Through them, this young student from the country finally found the city she has dreamed about. Risque experiences in cozy pubs, readings of avant-garde poetry, cosmopolitan parties, and romance. But there could be a dark side to her heavenly city in the form of a handsome, successful, and married Gabriel Denham, who was about to teach Clara all about falling in love. So I think that sounds fantastic. I love this cover. I'm hoping I can get to this soon because I'm going to go back to this bookstore when I go up for Christmas and I'm super excited to maybe pick up some more Margaret Drabble. The next book I got was Helen Hanif, um, Hanf's um, Q's Legacy. This is kind of the follow-up to um, 84 um, Charing Cross Road. And um, I'm not going to say much about that other than 84 Trending Cars Road is one of my favorite books. Um, I have heard that this isn't maybe as good and as sort of endearing, but I really wanted to see what happened next. Um, and I'm excited about that one. Q's Legacy by Helene Hanf. I'm saying that wrong. I know I am. Um, next thing I got is The Little Stranger by Sarah Waters. I'm on a kick to pick up Sarah Waters novels, even though I haven't read her. Um, I know that a lot of people are reading this for the month of October. There's a read-along or a read-a-thon going on right now that this is one of the books. And um, this is, let me see, one post-war summer in the home of rural Warwick, Warwickshire, Dr. Faraday, the son of a maid who has built a life of quiet respectability as a country country physician is called to a patient at Lonely Hunders, Hundreds Hall. Home to the Aries family for over two centuries, the Georgian house, once impressive and handsome, is now in decline, its masonry crumbling, its gardens choked with weed, and the clock in the stable yard permanently fixed at 20 to 9. I'm not going to say much more other than a haunted house, a creepy family. Um, I hear Sarah Waters writes a great sort of gothic-y Victorian book and I'm super excited to get to this. I think the cover's pretty great. Excited. I told you guys after I finished Autumn that I was interested in reading some more Ali Smith, so I picked up The Accidental by Ali Smith. Um, I don't know much about this. Um, it says, The Accidental is a dizzying, entertaining, weekly humor story of a mysterious stranger whose sudden appearance during a family summer holiday transforms four variously unhappy people. Each of the smarts, parents even Michael, son Magnus, and the youngest daughter Astrid, encounter Amber in his or her own sophistic way, but somehow her presence allows them to see their lives and their life together in a new light. So that sounds really good. I've heard Amy Jane over at Amy Jane Reads say that this is her favorite novel and the first one she read, so I was super excited to get it, and that is The Accidental by Ali Smith. The next book I got was From the Mouth of the Whale by Sojun? Sojun? Um, this is an Icelandic author. I read Moonstone by him um, a couple months ago. A quirky, weird, fantastic little novella. And this is really the book that put him on the map. It won him a bunch of awards. Um, it says the year is uh, 1635. Iceland is a world darkened by superstition, poverty, and cruelty. Men of science marvel over a unicorn's horn. Poor folk worship the virgin in secret. And both books are, and men are burnt. It, it's the story of a poet, I believe, um, and self-taught healer. But I'm not going to go much more into it because I think that sounds dark and mysterious. And I really, really, really liked Moonstone. So that's From the Mouth of the Whale by Sujun. I don't know how to say that, guys. And last but not least is a graphic novel, Blue is the Warmest Color by Julia Moreau. Let me get that name up there for you. This was turned into a film. Um, I've heard mixed results on the film. Some people love it. Some people hate it. But this is a graphic novel, a coming of age um, novel about two girls and... Um, the main character, I believe, is Clementine. When her openly gay best friend takes her to a gay bar, she becomes captivated by Emma, a punctious, confident girl with blue hair, an event that leads Clementine to discover new aspects of herself, both passionate and tragic. And the art, you guys, is just its stellar. It's so cool. Um, I'm super excited about this. Um, and that is Blue is the Warmest Color by Julia Mora. So that is my book haul. That is my great announcement. I hope, I hope some of you that are local to uh, the California South Bay, North Bay, East Bay come out to see me on November 7th. 
um, when I talk to Jesse Chassie and Jeff Nicholson. Um, I am super excited. Both of them are published by Unnamed Press. You know how much I love Unnamed Press. Um, so we'll go from there. I hope some of these books are in your wheelhouse and you'll pick some of them up. Or if you've read them all, since they are all fairly older, so you can get them at used bookstores in your library, um, please let me know. As always, if you are a return subscriber, thank you so much. I really do appreciate it. If you are new to my channel, I appreciate you coming by. I hope you like this video. And until next time, I will uh, talk to you guys later. Happy reading. Bye.